Okay. All right, we're recording. Um, all right, so I'm super excited to have Kalana on the line. Like, this is just um, amazing because I just love you, my soror, uh, you know, double diamond twin, everything. So um, I first had a, uh, the first question for you was just, how did you find out about It Works and what were you doing before you um, got started? Hmm, what was I not doing? Just like, what am I not doing now? So, talking young and free, you know, on um, Facebook and cute little pictures. I'll never forget, like that bluish purple dress that she took the pictures in. And you remember that one that she had, you know, the profile pics and she had her hands on her hips and all that stuff. I'm like, she looking like she having too much fun. And this little girl, and I used to be like, just like this, this little girl play too much. She having too much fun. I need to figure out what's going on. And so um, just out of wanting to support her, um, because I even did, when Cameron was nine, I did a Ballin' for the Cure breast cancer event. And I had an It Works distributor as a vendor there. And, um, and now she's, back into real estate and she funnels all her clients to me oh wow completely out of it works i mean look how the universe works right right yeah um, because i did not become her customer um she didn't even ask me to be her customer as a matter of fact um i did not become you know her distributor and another young lady who is a makeup artist fellow makeup artist and we're accountability partners now as well she um is in the baltimore area i met her at the make at the pro makeup show here in chicago just being the, you know, Christian woman that I am, I saw she was here. She needed a ride to the airport. You know, I offered to take her to the airport. We didn't even know each other. I offered to take her to the airport, and she slipped me some greens. Now, she slipped me the orange greens. Y'all, don't slip nobody the orange greens. That's a turnoff. That's like trying to court a man, and you just got your edges messed up. So that's a turnoff. So I literally tasted them and I was like, ooh, what is, I don't want these. So, you know, I didn't go with her either. And, um, but then someone else said something to me and I knew she wasn't really working the business. I knew Alina was and the relationship that we had, you know, she used to maybe to Cam and we knew each other from Memphis when she was an intern with my company. So I was like, look, I'm going with, you know, I, that's just me. I'm, that's how I am. I'm going with the person that I know. I don't care if she's right here or not. One, because she looked like she was having fun and she was doing it. And two, I just wanted to support her business. And so I was like, okay, I'm ready to do those raps things that you're talking about. And it's funny, y'all, because I found the messages in Messenger from when we first started talking about that. And I screenshotted. I was like, girl, look at this. We did this like two and a half years ago. And um, so that's really kind of how I, you know, said I was interested. She ran the same, I call it game, the same game on me. Come on, you really want to be a loyal customer and get 40% off or you want to get 40% off and make some money. I know you, you know, so same thing that we still say today. And um, so that's how I got started before I was doing the business. Um, I have been in corporate America for 10 years. Um, I wasn't downsized. I outed myself um, because they wanted me to relocate back to Memphis, Tennessee. Um, our whole entire sales team. I was a regional sales manager. Um, and so, I mean, all the perks. Ba gas car, corporate car, six figures, all the perks. But when you ask a single mom to leave her network where her biological brother is, you know, all of her support system that she's created to be able to travel 75%, run a region, do it successfully, and centralize back to where there's virtually no support. There's not two airports. So you're leaving, basically throwing she and her child to the wolves. Then I don't know about you all, but the answer is no. So I planned my exit strategy very, very well and left the company um, because there's no decision that's greater than Cameron Kale to me. I'm a mom first. And that's the, the most important gift that God has given me in the hardest job that I'll ever have to take on. And so that's the reason why I left the company and then started law school and my makeup artistry business. And in the last year of law school is when I was introduced to It Works Global. 
I literally duck and dodge makeup clients now because I'm like, it takes way too much time unless they come to my studio, you know, cause I used to be a, you know, go to them type deal. Um, but, or, and I still do for weddings and things, but, um, no, mm -mm. <laughs> that takes too much time. So that was me. All right. Yeah. I like your, I love your story. Um, it's funny cause Alina just, she got us all, <laughs> got us all. Just like that. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, um, my next question is, which you kind of explained it a little bit, but, um, since you did leave, um, and you do, do you do this full time? Are you still like do, you know, the okay. So, um, what does the day in the life of Kalana look like? Like, what are you doing, um, just throughout the day to work your business or, you know, personal things like that? Mm -hmm. So, um, before I even literally get out the bed, um, I pray and I thank God for even allowing me before I wake, open my eyes um, to be able to have the ability to do what I do. Um, and I have that special conversation and that, that individual time with God before I even hit the, the floor. Um, I think that's something that's important to me because it helps me. And then what I do is I kind of go over my six list or 10 list or whatever um, in my head. Um, I'm the type of person, you know how when you're writing a paper for school, then you kind of have to do an outline. I have to outline my day. Um, I still write lists. I'm not like a super, you know, techie person where I put everything um, in the system and things like that. I'm learning from all of you, my, um, you know, Diamond Sisters, to do more of that. But um, so that's the first thing that I do. Um, waking Cameron up and getting him off and preparing and things like that. Now that he's 13, that's simple. You know, that's the easy part. The hard part is preparing myself and getting myself ready. And this is something that you all, once you transition into working full time for yourself is you'll have to decide, am I going to get up and be out in these streets half the day or the full day or and blitz people and talk and go to a coffee shop and work or go to a hotel and work or and sit still or if I'm going to take a day to run errands or you know what have you so my weekly schedule looks like mondays are my office days i sit down in the office and handle anything that i have to handle tech wise you know behind the scenes sending messages whatever follow-ups emails all that good stuff because monday's the best day because that's when people are coming back from the weekend they're reading their emails they're always preparing and you're the forefront of their mind if you get them right there you know, send them a happy message because they're already like, dang, no, I'm back at work, you know? So, um, so that's my Mondays. My Tuesdays are usually like out, um, half a day and work out and blitz and things like that. And then running like family errands and all that good stuff. Um, Wednesdays totally out, um, because it's rap Wednesdays. And so it's good for photo ops and stuff like that. So I am totally out. I spend a lot of time out in the streets, guys, because I'm just like super social. Um, but Wednesdays are totally out. It's also because I have events with Cameron in the evening on Wednesdays and so at his art institute. So I'm able to do to do that. But I'm always making sure that in the process, I'm doing income producing activities. So around noon, I do um, mock calls for the team and they know it's like a standing time period. 12.15, around noon, it's an alarm that goes off. And I'm just like, okay, everybody start, you know, contacting your people, reminding them to get on these mock calls, these noonday lunch break hours. I close a lot of people on mock calls. Um, and it's, mock calls are super simple. You know, if you all aren't doing them and things like that, basically, you know, what are you doing around this time? I just need you to get on this call and my mentor is gonna train me, you know? But the more and more people I have on here, the more and more training points I get, you know, that gets their new, the newbies, especially their family and friends on to support them. Can I count on you to support me? You know, so we do mock calls, especially um, when it's like push seasons, do mock calls twice a day, but just slow seasons, I try to do them lunch break hours because that's when people don't mind jumping on because they don't have to worry about kids and everything else like that. Um, and then evenings i do a lot of um calls and things like this a lot of one-on-ones um of course because i was a regional sales manager like reporting and all that good stuff i'm always 
always in my reports, always checking that stuff. You all can kind of see behind me. When I say I'm seriously intentional about my prayers and my, you know, and my team and my business, like these are, I'm in my room in my bed working, y'all. Y'all need to be about this life. So, <laughs> uh, but here on my wall, like I have an all black room. And so here on my wall, I have like executive charts for all the people that have not hit executive and Ruby and things like that. And um, these are, you know, people that want to work, who have responded. We've gone through their game plan. I've given them, you know, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, some incentives and stuff like that. So. Those are kind of like things like this, you know, are things I pray about in the morning and in the evening and put on my list um, so that these people stay focused and I'm able to, they receive what I have, have for them. But um, yeah, as far as a week and things like that, it's kind of, you know, up and down, but I do make sure that I keep my Mondays as my office days, my Wednesdays as my out in the street days, um, Tuesdays as kind of like a family shopping and things like that. When it comes to weekends, I'm humping parties, parties, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, parties. Um, I get a lot of clients from church. So I'm always drinking keto coffee, drinking greens, doing something. I'm wearing my jacket to church, always. I mean, everybody already, you know, knows that about me. And so, um, so yeah, so that's kind of in a in a gist, you know, what we do. We've scaled back on a lot of like team trainings and things like that um, because I'm more one-on-one, -on -one, especially when people start, you know, getting slower and falling off, then I'm not going to keep blasting and we're all grown. So, and doing the same thing. I'm just, I'm like, look, I, you see me getting paid. So you going to get paid? Well, you know, what, what you, what you want? You know, so I'm real, really intentional with that, too, um, um, as far as not just throwing a bunch of messages out there to the thin air, because I am, like you said, a single busy mom. Yeah, I like that you said that. And it's funny because I actually only do like um, real trainings around this time, like slow season, while you know everyone is needing to like recuperate, mm -hmm. things like that, get ready for the busy season. So right. Um, yeah, but I am definitely trying to get in on that one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with my team just so they can nur be nurtured. Um, okay, so my next question um, is, how was the journey to Double Diamond? Um, how has it changed your family's life, so you and your son's life? Um, well, he's wondering why I'm not triple yet. You know, Cameron is a hot mess. Um, he's like, you're not triple yet? What are you doing? You know, he's a hot mess. So, um, but it's changed it like tremendously. Like he, he wears his clothes, his, you know, his hats, his, you know, it works shirts, you know, his bracelets. He was totally, totally inspired by the trip, which I'm sure, you know, we'll talk about in a second, but um, it makes us a, an it works family, you know, um, because to double diamond, I incorporated my entire family um, into the business. And so when we hit that 999, of course, it was like, okay, anybody who's not in, y'all getting in now, you know? So it was, you know, stuff like that. And when I, the, when I'm telling you all, what I did going from Diamond to, or from Ruby to Diamond and from Diamond to Double was the same thing intentional praise and intentional work like that's why this is behind me it says triple push because like party 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 like set up your calendars now through march my, i'm a march baby my birthday's march 9th I, everybody knows i party hard the whole entire month like i'm serious about my birthday for the last two years i haven't done it like clearly i mean i've gone to dinner maybe something super quick and I used to like really, you know, I'm like birthday party enough is $20,000, you know, and this year when we get $30,000 this year when we hit double. So what I did was a lot of parties, like literally a whole lot of parties, because again, I'm a face to face person and I can close a 400 box in one room, you know, give me, give me three or four people there and I can close a 400 box, whether I have to follow up with their cousins or aunties that they 
tell about it or what, I'm going to close that 400 box each time I have a party. And so that's something that's very, very key. Um, having your list of people in front of you is super important because you don't, once you hit boom season, you don't have time to be writing lists. You need to be having your list now. Merry Christmas to yourself. Is to not go into 2019 without a list of 100 people. Forget because it's not enough to take you to double. I went from Ruby to Diamond in three weeks, and you know, year before last. And I didn't even go to conference. Like conference is great, but I, I, I've been in multi level marketing since I was 18. So I, and again, I was in corporate sales. So I literally looked at the industry trajectory and what it works did and i said hold on bonuses what are those okay and i start like peaking people around this fall season in december and folks were like oh Glenn, i want to see what you're doing i'll tell you in a month that's what i would tell people <laughs> when i was a ruby i was like we'll talk about it just wait until 2000 you know what was it 16 it was 2015 i said january 2016 i'm gonna, you know i'm gonna have a quick event and that's because I knew that the boom season was coming. And I was kind of like planting seeds and holding people off to the next year. Now, I'm not saying hold people off, but I'm saying this is what I did when I realized that bonuses were a part of the structure and things like that. And no, I haven't tripled. I haven't waited for the bonus season for triple. Don't get me wrong. Um, it just, to me, because I didn't hit it in the summertime when I was pushing, then it doesn't make sense to hit it now. Why would I try to hit triple in December and cancel myself out of a bonus? You all have to start praying over your business and start making sure that you are so intentional as far as your logistics. Um, and I teach that a lot to my team because logistics mean a lot to this. That's how I got on the cruise. You know, I, it's not about racing to the finish line and getting there the fastest. It's about who gets there the smartest. And I have, friends that are doubles and triples who were not on that boat, but I was, you know, and they're like, Oh, come on. That's how you do it. And I'm like, you don't, you know? So it's a lot of benefit in doing things like this. You are all showing up and sharing information with your accountability partners, because that's exactly how I, how I made it. I didn't stop telling everybody about it. And I would definitely say, of course, use the product and stay vocal about everything and tell everybody about your products. Um, but be intentional, have a list in front of you, and don't stop. There is no sleep in BV or no BV in sleep. Yep, that's true. And yeah, same here. Like, I was like, I mean, if I'm going to go triple, I might as well do a, you know, big and wait for that bonus um, coming up. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, as far as consistency, which you kind of already um, hit on that, but um, well, first we do want to hear how the trip was for you, and then um, and then you can kind of go yeah. into yeah, <laughs> um, then you can kind of tell us like you said parties, but I just want to hear like how you really you know knock out a four hundred box. So first you can start. With the trip. Okay. Um. So. The trip was nothing but God, like honestly and truthfully. I mean, I just realized, I didn't realize that I found out this like yesterday of last year, um, uh, <laughs> December 12th. And I showed Cameron the video where I was crying and looking a hot mess. Oh my gosh. My mom was like, why did you cry like that on the internet? <laughs> she was like, oh my gosh, that was so ugly. Couldn't you have pre-recorded it? Like, she was so funny. But, you know, we were supposed to leave. Let me tell you how God works, y'all. We were supposed to go in May. Um, I would have had to take Cameron out a whole week and a half of this, you know, first year of a very high school program when he's, you know, 13. And so I was like, man, you know, should I pick Africa Mexico or um what was the other one we could pick? I forgot. I forgot. But anyway, there was you know, there was no choice. I was going to Africa. I'm going to Motherland. So and I was like and I was like, oh well, I'll just have to take him out. Then not enough people responded and they had to move the trip to the summertime. I was like, Will you look at God? 
now he's out of school. I don't have to take out or, you know, then y'all, then they flew us. We all met in Atlanta and we flew from Atlanta. So who lives close to Atlanta? All of my family and my people. And they were like, oh, well, you know, Kalana, we'll fly you down there, you know, whenever you want. And I go, I go home every summer anyway for like a month. So that was money saved because I flew, they flew me down there and they flew me, you know, back home. So it was just like so, so awesome how it was all set up. Then, you know, I'm a makeup artist. So they decided to do a women's conference. They were like, we want you to set up a whole beauty bar. Y'all ain't saying nothing but a word. So it was so fun to do all these women and, you know, put lashes on them. They had had, they never had lashes and, you know, their cheeks fleeked and lipstick. And I had everything. I mean, Cameron and I had five suitcases. We could have put all of our stuff in a suitcase and a half. We had gifts for kids. I had gifts for girls for the beauty project. I have a nonprofit and I did a beauty project workshop with the, the girls over there that they're in the I Am Not Forgotten Home, which is an orphanage um, where children's couple, we take care of the kids 100% of the time. And, and then, I mean, gifts for all the kids and bubbles for them to play with and chalk and, you know, stuff for the women. It was just, we just had so, so much stuff. And so, um, and then, I mean, they probably just made me almost have an accident because they called me and they were like, we, we know your story and we'd like you to, to minister to the ladies. And I was just like driving internet and broke out in tears. I was like, God, why are you doing this to me? Like, I don't understand. Why are you just continuously like blessing me in overflow? I just, I mean, I could break down right now, y'all. It was just so amazing to be able to tell, I get my strength from within, from not always being able to, and being able to feel as beautiful and as worthy of life and love and living as I do right now. So, you know, to a lot of people, it's always to, I guess, quote unquote, fabulous and glamorous type, you know, women that they have it. And yeah, by the time we get to this age, nine times out of 10, it's not faking the funk. Nine times out of 10, we do have it. But when we started, we didn't have it. You know, it's a natural radiance now. But 10 years ago, when I held my head up high, and you know, I was this and that, there was a lot of internal issues that I, I dealt with. And that story is what I was able to minister through word. And when I was there in Africa, um, and so, and Cameron was able to be with a group of men. There was a group of men that went, you know, the owner of Children's Cup was there and they ministered and worked with him and, you know, was able to, you know, he was able to go off with the guys on his own. I said, y'all know that I'm crazy. I am letting you take my only <laughs> child off away from me in a whole nother country y'all better watch my baby. <laughs> so, um, and so it was just like blessings on blessings on blessings. He built relationships, you know, you know, it's about, about $3,500, $4,000, um, to go. And, you know, when you build in all of your additional, you know, fun funds and stuff like that, you can round up to a $5,000 trip if you want. That's on the high end. And so Cameron's thing before we even left was, okay, how much money we need to save to come? Cause we're coming back next year. Like this is what we're going to do every year. So, you know, so forget about everything else. We come back to Africa to see these kids and my homies. That's his thing. So, you know, it was just that type of blessing. Um, and so I'm just, you know, I'm ready and willing to just be a servant leader as God would have, have me to be. And I am actually in a, um, pastoral studies program right now. I'm in pursuit of my doctoral degree. and and so um, I graduated law school about a year and a half ago, and I have my law degree in juvenile justice and child law and some family advocacy. And so that's where it stems to my nonprofit organization. And like, again, it's called the Beauty Project. And so all of that worked in the one is what I do outside of it works. Like I said, I duck and dodge makeup clients. You know, I'm not going to tell my pastor and first lady no, but everybody else, I'll be like, <laughs> but um but there's a way to work that you know unless they come to my home studio because ways that i close 400 box to answer that question um 
if there is someone just literally today, as I've been on my, I call it my death bed, y'all, my sick bed. I'm just, <laughs> today I have been under the bed. But um, so she just called me today and asked me to do a work, like to do a uh, makeup for a big, huge photo shoot for about 20 women. So I've worked with her before. She said that she's going to have three makeup artists. Okay, so some of them will come to me, some of them will go to the other two studios. And I said, have you ever talked to, have you talked to the other makeup artist? She said, no. I said, let me do it, do it all. So the reason I did that is because when people come to me to get their makeup done, they start in my restroom with cleanser, okay? I have them sprayed with toner, okay? And I have them put on stretch mark cream to moisturize their face. They get fresh white washcloths like they're at a spa right? And so that's the first introduction to the product. And then they come over to my makeup suite area and they get their face done. Well, I'm going to have two other women of my team, as well as one of my other um, It Works team members to make sure that everybody is washing and comfortable. I'm going to have mimosas. We're going to make it just a whole glam suite type event. And that's going to be closing for 400 boxes right there. Because when someone sits in my chair, by the time they leave my chair, at least four products have touched their face. I use the defining gel as a primer before the makeup to make it stay. The wow also works very well. It works underneath your eyes to tighten and things like that, but it works as a good primer as well. Mix it in with a defining gel and it doesn't give you that white residue. Okay, so they're wanting to get all of these products. The toner I'm using as I'm also a, a Mac freelance artist. Um, so I equ equate that to the Fix Plus, you know, it's a makeup stay spray. And so I use the um, toner for that. Okay, and so with that being said, now I've secured the entire contract of the 20 plus women to come. They're going to have time slots to get their makeup done. And every single one of them will leave. If they're not already someone's It Works client, mine. And so that, those are ways where I don't mind doing makeup because they've come to my environment. They're going to taste shakes. That's going to give them energy, coffee, because they need to have focus, because these are business women. They'll have keto coffee, like, you know, so it's going to be a total experience. And that's the way you have to intertwine what you do, you know, and I would love to hear if you all have questions, like what are some of the other different things that you, you know, that you all do to kind of give suggestions on how to kind of intertwine if you all need that, that would be, um, that would be fine. I don't, you know, my offering that up. But as far as another way to close 400 boxes would be strategic, you all. When you look at, okay, so I'll give you the example of this executive chart. When you look at the executive chart, I had a conversation with a DT and she's under a diamond that I'm building. I said, okay, so who on your chart is working? She was like, nobody. Cool. You don't need nobody to work. What you need to do is get 800 MBV and get yourself to executive. Christmas cash is on the table. There's no reason that you should sleep on this money. I said, so, Put your husband, I have, I have her husband in one box and that's up underneath her. And then I have her sister in another. I said, get your sister on the call tonight, the Christmas cash call training I'm gonna have with the team. We're gonna get your sister $200. That's gonna be minimum 200 BB. You work on the other 200 BB and we'll help you. You make sure that you finish off, she needs two more to get herself $100. You finish off being commission qualified by getting your own two. Then you rotate your efforts to your husband because it's all the same money coming into the same household. So now you need to do, put every single thing that you get, not under your sister, cause you gonna be paying her. But unless you control that box, now you all, if you have family members and you control that box and they gonna give you that money, then do it. But that husband box, now you need to be putting everything underneath him. Too many people will get confused with this, this chart and this process and you need to be making sure that you're putting those people underneath the right spots. And another great example would be if you're just trying to commission qualify yourself and get your own, put the 15 BVs and the 25 BVs, the small ones underneath you. Keep those yourself. Get those five points, get your hundred dollars and rotate that on to a box that the bigger ones to a box you control. If it's a triple threat, if it's a system or something like that, 
the larger orders need to go to the boxes where you control. So example would be my sister's on my top line. So I put, I only had to put five orders. I put four huge ones and one small one, closed her box just like that and got the hundred dollars and commission qualify her and she's a 400 because it was like really lacking last month you know but again if you think strategy don't keep those big volume orders for yourself keep put those big volume orders in places where they count because even though christmas cash is on the table you still have to think promotion if you're trying to promote okay now if they're buying smaller volume things this is something i told someone else earlier today as well then Start offering up if you're not trying to promote and you're not worried about your pay and you're just worried about Christmas cash because that's really what's going to pay you right away. Promote fat fighters and cleans because of, and greens around this time period. Greens because weather changes. Greens and fat fighters are what's going to help them maintain and not not lose weight and not gain weight. They're going to maintain their weight, but and then the cleanse is going to help them feel better after they eat all the food. You know, so one item for their first month. Save that big, that big order. You know how people want to get the system because they want to lose a lot of weight. Don't let them order that this month. Order that next month. So, oh no, wait till the, wait till January. You know, talk, wait till January. You know, I just want you to feel good. Get through the holiday season and, you know, make sure you don't gain any weight. And then next month, we're going to start the year off right with our weight loss. Y'all, that's when you need the value. So, yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Cause um, I definitely like, uh, like since we are, um, you know, preparing for um, boom season, it does seem like you're kind of like, should I do Christmas cash or, you know, try to um, start getting people up for that. Um, but yeah, it's, my, it's definitely Christmas cash. Cause that's what's going to pay you. Right, but you still have to be strategic in the Christmas in Christmas thing. Mm hmm Because like all these people that you end up keeping, if you need them for that uh, zero box, you can contact them. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. So my uh, last question, then I'll open it up for um for um questions. Um. So can you share three tips with us? It can be any tips that you like as far as um personal, business, whatever, um, you know, you feel in your heart that can just uh, help them, uh, help us. Okay. Um, well, one that is so important that I know I mentioned, but sometimes we overlook, and Cammie said it to us in the, um, the Diamond Retreat, like, if you are not spending that motivational time um, with God, you are not focusing, you know, you are not focusing yourself. You're not focusing your, your, your family. You're not praying over your family. You're not focusing your vision. Um, there's no way that you can be successful at something like this that takes you so topsy turvy and does so many different things to us emotionally because we're in an, an emotional business still. Um, if you don't have that anchor, you know, and especially as a single woman, you know, raising a man child, you know, that anchor is so very, is so very important, you know. Um, and so I would say that is a huge, huge tip to make sure that you're spending your time with God, you know, making sure that you are getting in that devotional time period and, um, and even, you know, reading your books and things like that. We talked a lot about that on the call last night, you know, with Alina and Fallon and Lasagna and Ashley. And, you know, that's just key. You know, that, that GoPro, that networking pro, that, you know, all the books and things like that they're talking about and how, you know, Ashley said, I don't make things up. You know, I got out of a book. You know, that's, that's key. And by me being a blue I mean, I do make a lot of stuff up. You know, y'all think, y'all know, y'all know that movie, I don't know if you've seen um, oh, one of Medea's movies, and she says, you can't lie, you a lie all you. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> but, you know, um, and so you just kind of have to make sure that you do what's best for you emotionally, and you have to feed your spirit. 
in order to be successful at anything, especially something like this. You know, you can stay as a distributor. You can, you can even make it to Emerald, to Diamond, but you can't get to double, triple, and ambassador without developing yourself in order to develop your team. You just can't. There's no way. Um, again, what they said last night, there's no such thing as balance. So get that out your head. You know, that's another tip. Um, there is no such thing. You know, my son is very used to this lifestyle. Um, I used to do other businesses and I used to work in corporate and I asked him um, last week, I said, what do you think now that cause legal age of staying home by yourself is 14 in Illinois? So I said, what do you think about mommy going back to corporate next year? What? Why would you do that? And I was like, I don't know. You're 14. You're, you know, you'll be, you can stay home and you can come home and you can, I don't want to do that. That's boring. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So don't do that. I think you should stay where it works. You know, make this business a part of your family. You know, the balance, get that out your head. There's going to always, it's seasonal, you know, learn your industry and learn the seasonal ups and downs and things like that. This is our planting season. In a, in a month, in a couple of weeks, is our boom season. You know, we don't go into our slow season until like summertime, hot months and things like that. But that's because everybody's out in the streets. Learn how to capitalize on that. If you're a blue and you're a social person, there is no such thing as a slow season. You know, I honestly and truthfully, if I, if I work hard, I can thrive in every single season because I have no problem being in people's face. You know, I really think that God has me on this earth to be a servant leader and to minister through communication, you know, face to face teaching and helping people be able to find, you know, their way to, to be able to pour into others you know, is a gift that I have. And so if that's one of your gifts, then you don't have a slow season. Now, if you're a, an internet network marketer, your summertime will be your slow season. So, because people are out in the streets. So you have to learn how to balance that and to prepare for that seasonal change. And, and as well as the winter time, people are going to be behind the computers, but they're going to be all about their family. So they may not be checking for you which means you've got to also learn how to massage that. You know, if you go back to the video that I did and introduced um, December, I call it with our church announcements, um, <laughs> then it gave you a lot of tips and things like that as far as you should be sending things to your customers. You, you know, you should be having holiday parties. You know, if you're going to do an internet party, you could pre-send stuff to people and have them open it up together. Like, oh, you know, this is cool. And you all are all face-to-face -face in different areas. That drums up attention and it lets them be vocal to other people. And then they want to have an internet party for you. You can just have packages ready to go, you know. And for a couple of dollars, that's going to get you loyal customers. That's going to get you Christmas cash. It's worth it, you know. And then my last tip would be look the part. Um, you are a it works man and it works woman. But not only that, you know, we come from a company of excellence. You know, we keep God first. Uh, we are green, black, and bling. You know, you know what our colors are. You know what we stand for. So be that, you know, be, look the part, represent your brand well. And don't, I had one person that was always, I don't know why I'm not promoting and I'm watching her videos. Y'all, I kid you not. Why is your hair all over your head? Do not tag me, period, period. Matter of fact, I'm about to write you off the team. Like, the ratchetity. Do, don't do it. Y'all don't play yourselves. Do not do that. Like, you know, I, I didn't know if this was going to be recorded or not, but I put some lipstick on it's a foundation. Like, I can't, you know. So it's just so important to not be a mess. <laughs> you know, whether you are writing a manuscript or you are speaking or you are a rap girl, if you are in the pulpit, you have to be a, doing it of excellence. And that's what God has called over your life. And if you are going to receive it, then you need to step up to the plate and just make sure that you're ready for it. And that's, you know, my tag is always, you know, just 
be God's, God's beauty made beautiful. Like seriously. So those would be my three tips. Well, don't get on me right now, because Lord Jesus, I look crazy. Girl, everybody can't wake up beautiful like this. You wake up like this. Y'all can't, y'all can't stand her internet. Just, just that natural. Natural. Yeah. If, if she took her, if she took her, her hat off, it yeah. probably her hair would just, her hair would just bounce and be like, come girl. I try. <laughs> You probably, you probably, they probably, the Deltas probably couldn't stand you. Come on, some she's no. so pretty to her left and right. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about them because Lord, but it's <laughs> they, they be supporting. So, <laughs> um, but so yeah, so I'm gonna open it up for anyone who has questions. Um, I know you guys probably do because she just gave us a mouthful. So, <laughs> if you want to, if you have a question, just unmute yourself. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can. I see your cute picture. Oh, great. Because the screen, um, my speaker is messed up. <laughs> but anyway, so um, for do you, okay, so I guess I got a two-part question. So the first part would be, you said you do one-on-one -on -one phone calls, and I think I'm more so of a one-on-one -on -one person too. Yeah. So when you do your one-on-one -on -one phone calls, do you kind of pretty much let them tell you what they want to do, or do you tell them like what you need for them to do? And if you have some that have kind of like fallen off, like fallen by the wayside and may be discouraged because they've been in so long and haven't been able to enroll like a distributor on their own, but you know, like I, like I believe everybody that joins me, like join for a reason, they have a purpose and they can do it. So what do you, what do you tell to those people who feel like they've been in for like almost a year or more now and they still have yet to enroll like a distributor? Okay, so one, you ask, you let them know, you have to stop holding hands and be hardcore with people. Um, you let them know where the last time you've seen them. Trainings, mm -hmm. have they shown up? Have they given you lists? Have they come to you? You know, have they been on calls like this? You know, and then you remind them of their why. And I will literally give you the one call. And again, I, you all, I come from a ministry standpoint. My team knows this about me. So we're talking about Christmas cash. And I have a, I have a distributor and she says, this girl tells me the same thing every month. Yada, 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 yada. I'm like, okay, well, let me handle it. Give it a mama bear. So, um, I have a conversation with her. She has six girls, six girls. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm sorry. So you're not gonna get these coins for these children. I don't understand. So we have a whole conversation with what they need to be doing, what they're not doing and have them pull out the charts, have them feed you what you already know. You know, you can see what's going on. You know what's going on. But mm -hmm. you have to have them feed that to you um, as well so that they say it out loud and they internalize it themselves. And depending on the person, their why is super important. Another way you have to help people tell their stories. A lot of people don't know how to tell stories. Uh -huh. And so um, I literally just did this yesterday for a girl who's not even on my team. But she says, how do I how do I vocalize, you know, the fact that I want to pay $8,000 off and I want to use this business to do it because most people don't, you know, that's not, they can't even fathom being that low on a car note. I said, okay, true enough. But what will that $8,000 free up for you? Will that $8,000 allow you to not have to tell your child no, that she can't have something? Will that $8,000 allow you to be pre-approved for a home? Will that $8,000, what will it do for you? So you kind of have to flip it around and help people be able to tell their stories and help people work this business. You okay. know what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't be nice and rub backs at this point especially going into the boom season because you won't have time to hold their hand because you need to be working new recruits and working new business. Um, but you have to help people be able to understand why they started this and the tools that it takes. So you let them know what's there and what's available and that they haven't tapped in, you know, point blank period. You haven't done it. I have somebody who says, I tried, Kalana, I've tried. I haven't talked to not one person. So you ain't tried nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, and the young lady with the six, six girls, you all, I literally made her call out her girl's names. And I said, what are your kids' names again? 
and she she tells me and then I and then I went into and I was surprised myself but it's just where the Holy Spirit led me I went into prayer and I said and so now what you need to do is remember every single time that you get tired that you think you need to sleep more than getting BV you need to remember that that's one more girl that you are checking off your list that you will not be calling out their name to come get a gift from under the tree because you didn't have the hundred dollars to spend because you didn't make it. I'm going to use that tonight. <laughs> Thank you. And well, wait, I'll let anybody else ask a question before I ask another question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a question as well. Mm -hmm. um, so my, the biggest thing that I struggle with is knowing when, kind of to follow up with Crystal's question, mm -hmm. is kind of knowing when to, um, like, not handhold so much. So, mm -hmm. like, at what point do you get with someone where you're like, okay, you say that you're trying, like, or even if you just see them posting and you see them doing this or whatever, but all they're doing is posting, they don't get on trainings, they don't do mm -hmm. none of that. Is it, like, is it wrong to, to be like, okay, well, I can't really help you unless I, you know, unless you get on these trainings and you actually feed yourself. No. Cause I feel like sometimes I handhold from the beginning too much. And then yeah. it's kind of like, they expect it from me throughout the whole process. And I'm like, I can't mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I have to work my business too. Yeah. So yeah. how do you kind of keep that balance with people? Girl, it was the hardest thing to learn. So my line name um, is mother dear. So that should tell you a whole lot. Like I am, you know, I always have snacks in my car. Like I always have, if you tell me your birthday is today, I got you a gift right here. Like I always have gifts in my house. <laughs> like, you know, you come over and, and I was like one of those people that was straight to the top corporate diva. I didn't want a man. I didn't want kids. I didn't want any of this, you know, God just spit all of this over on top of me. I don't know. It must've been internal growing up, but I, I ran from it, but I am true cold hander, mother dear. I had to learn the balance. And, um, and so the balance comes from when you realize that it's taking time out of your business because they're, you're not getting paid to hold their hand. You're getting paid to start over. We make more money recruiting someone else and helping someone else fail than, you know, or succeed, you know, then we do by holding hands and trying to revive the old because that's what the church revival is for. And if they don't show up to the church revival, which is the affirmation event that's going on next week in Atlanta. And if you're anywhere in the Midwest, we're having a big one. I'm going to try to top the one in Atlanta, but we having a big one <laughs> January 20th um, here. And so, you know, if they don't show up to things like that, you really can't do anything for them. And that's what you have to let them know. I have literally given you all of the tools. You know, I know what your personality says. I know what your why is. I know what your worth is. I've prayed over your business, but I've done it. You haven't done it. And until you do it for yourself, there's nothing, there's no, nothing further. There's no more that we can do. And once you cut the umbilical cord like that, that actually brings them back. That was perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I also have a question. Um, what is a good, I guess, motivational book that you would suggest like for someone, I guess, I would qualify those mm -hmm. discouraged people mm -hmm. that have been for almost a year and mm -hmm. I kind of flipped away mm -hmm. um, so what what's a good motivational or inspirational book that you would suggest for I, I guess in my mind I'm looking it up I'm looking it up right now um so start with why it's by Simon Sinek and when I tell you I really don't have time in my life to do things for for nothing. So the last two courses I took this past semester, my semester just ended last week. Um, there were two leadership courses in in ministry. 
and one is basically community organizing and one is um, literally leadership in the church. And so I had to write, a, do a book review. And I was like, look, I'm not doing something that's not gonna help me with my business. So what's a book on this list that's gonna help me with my business? And when I tell you I was floored by this book, this start with why, like, there was no one else in the class. When he asked us, well, how did you all like your books? Like, I literally could regurgitate and tell him the entire book. I was so amped and excited. Everybody else was like, oh, yeah, well, it was okay. I was like, it was this, it was that, and it helped me, yada, yada, yada. I was so excited, you know. So it's on Audible. Um, if you are a busy mom like me, you don't have time to read and you listen to books. Um, I'll share this with Antoinette. And if you haven't used Audible before, your first book is free, so you can listen to it free. If she can afford it to you. Thank you. You're welcome. And you know we're reading Soar company wide right now. Um, the Build Your Vision with T D Jakes. So that's the that's the It Works Company book right now that's on your December goal list. Okay. I didn't know that, but I'm glad I know that now. <laughs> Yeah, because um, Katrina Ferguson um, has been, like, breaking it down. I and, love her. Uh, she is, you, I think I, I, yeah, I put it in our group. So you, I can, uh, you, I or Crystal can tag you in it. Because she just broke it all the way down, just the first, like, three chapters. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the first, I mean, even the, in, the introduction of that book is on point. So... Hi, Kalana. I have a question for you. Okay. Um, Y'all are too cute on this team. <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you. Not like you, though. But I know, so I totally believe that you won't find balance. Like, I've heard Alina say it so many times, so I do believe uh -huh. that. But my thing is, like, I feel like I allow myself, I'm the yes person. Like, I don't know how to tell people no. Yeah. And Me especially either. with church, because I'm Girl. big in church in my ministry too. So, and I feel so bad if I tell somebody no. So like right now, these last few weeks have just been crazy. I'm also right. still a full-time student. And, you know, just, I feel like sometimes I'm wearing myself thin. Am I looking but, at the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said in my head, you are my big sister. Because like when I follow you, I'm like, man, Lord, she is like, this is me right now. What is going right. on? Right. But like, I just feel like I wear myself thin and I don't know how to find the balance, if that right. makes sense. Like, I know it's not really going to be one, but how right. can I pretend or try to find something to kind of make it all level out or work or, because I just feel like if I go too far this way, then everything else on this yeah. side is just going to all crumble. So you know why, um, and this is, another, this is one of the major things I took from that class, um, the leadership one I was telling you all about. Learn how to say no, sometimes. And not to everything and not to the things that, you know, you can't help and you have to say yes to. But some things. So on Tuesday, yesterday, um, was when I was, you know, it's, I, I was using that as my office day because Monday I was out in the streets. Um, Boo was leaving town, so I said, I'm going to run around town, and I'm going to say bye to the boo, and all this stuff like that, or whatever. Y'all, dating and running this business, that's a whole nother training. So, girl, um, dating period is crazy. Girl. So, <laughs> you know, it's just a whole other level. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I used Tuesday yesterday as my office day instead. Well, my first lady texted me at 10 in the morning to go to church and do pastor's makeup at noon. That was one of those times where I was like, this is my in office day. <laughs> you know, so you want to say no because you want to stay focused on your business. Right. But that's you your can't. pastor. Your exactly. national recording artist pastor, you know, and he's doing professional pictures. You want 
your work on his professional pictures. So what do you do? That's not a say no time period, especially when you live less right. than 10 minutes from the church. You go over, you be his face real quick, and you come back to your office and you do your work, you know, and you refocus and get yourself back focused, which is what I did. So what one of the main things that I learned is that you have to bucket your list. And the reason why you don't say no to a lot of things is because you think that um, you're going to be forgotten or that you feel like someone else is going to step up into the limelight where you are already, especially in the ministry, you know, that's the spot. And so you have to learn how to say it's okay to not always have that spotlight because baby, the $30,000 that you can make in this spotlight is so create a whole nother balance, <laughs> create a whole nother light over here. So that's where the way I started looking at it. The reason I stopped being so, I started ducking and dodging makeup artists because that was a thing for me too. It was, you know, I've created a, a name for myself as far as a makeup artist with business women, you know, the everyday business woman, I had a lot of clients and I fell back unless people like are totally recommending or big deals and things like that and now I require people to come to me like I said because of that time I used to be an on site no I am on site on my site <laughs> you yeah. know so you kind of have to like refocus and recenter and see what's most important and I would definitely if money is if you're in a season where money is of importance then that's where you need to focus to say what's bringing me the best um, and the most amount of income or with this season going into where it is if you want to promote know what the sacrifice is where you have to say some no's for that or whatever because again it's going to be a seasonal balance but the reason why you 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 are a yes person is because you're a giver naturally yeah you know what I'm saying? We naturally want to see people happy. I did the best in corporate when I was working with the smaller or smaller companies. So I was a regional sales manager, but I was kind of like the manufacturing rep. So, you know, in the office where they have like the paper person. And so that, that was me. I managed the Hammer Mill and HP brands, all the staples, all the Office Depot. When, you, when you're like printing paper, I know how every speck of that paper, all this stuff, right? And I did the best with the mom and pop shops because I knew that this was a generational wealth they were building. I knew that their families depended on this money, you know? So I did the best where I could see the huge rate of return versus a corporate giant and somebody who was just going into work and getting a salary to sell a truckload of paper. Right. Because that's, I'm a giver. My heart was in that. That was my ministry. It was natural, you know? And so you have to kind of find your buckets and your balance, you know, and if you kind of, if you inbox me offline, I'll show you a worksheet that really helps with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to go over here to my child. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, before I lose y'all. I have a question, but I don't think nobody can hear me. We can hear you. Can, okay, I have to put my headphones on. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so my question is kind of like, um, it's kind of different. My personality that I have, and this is where I'm trying to find my balance. I'm real, I won't say stern, but I'm real, like, emotions for me is something, like, that I don't really oh, show. Oh, Lord, I got and, one. <laughs> and, like, what, <laughs> with my team, when you come to me with excuses to me, it don't sit well. Like, I don't understand excuses. Now, I do understand that in life we have problems and, you know, we all do go through. So I'm, I'm very understanding. That's one thing about it. Okay. Um, I was one of the people that, like, literally came into the boom season. I, was, I, I, like, built my team, like, really fast. Okay. I ended up um, mm -hmm. going Emerald in March. Then I got chartered for a double diamond, like, a couple of months later. Right? Okay. My issue, I think, um, most definitely came because I was too busy letting everybody get a chance. And what I mean by that is that some people, this lifestyle is just not for them. Right. And even though they say they want to do it, you know, they all game for it. They're mm -hmm. not equipped for this. Right. And so um, I wanted to know, because at this point, it's like majority of my team has vanished. And, you know, because it's a slow season, a lot of them right. feel this discouraged. And mm -hmm. I went to the point where I was trying to hold hands, but 
Well, my personality and holding hands, that didn't last long. So mm-hmm. I kind of just let them do that. You know, hey, go ahead and live your life. Like, I'm not going to be there and make you do this. Like, I'm going to be there for you if you want right. to do this, but I'm not going to make you do this because you're grown. Exactly. Uh-huh. So um, now that I'm rebuilding, I went to, I'm, I'm at a point now where I feel like uh, with the people that I'm speaking with and talking to, it's like, I let them know immediately, like, listen. What in your life are you trying to change? Like, what lifestyle goals do you have for yourself? Because if you don't have a lifestyle balance, this business is not going to work for you. Yep. And, like, I'm now to the point where I, I found out how to balance my personality. But then I got people that were on my team that mm-hmm. I'm, no, I'm not reaching out to anymore. And I know they want me to, but I'm just not. Okay. Okay. Because I honestly don't – it's like I don't really need – I don't want that on my team. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm being real selective, and sometimes I I do care. So I kind of feel bad, but at the same time, I just don't want you on my team anymore. But if you want me to help you, like I'm help, but I feel like I'm not really reaching out. You know how they say, like, how do you know when to like reach out to people to see if you can help them? Is it bad to like not want to reach out because you feel like they were more of a problem than they were help? No, so that's that's a natural emotion. Um. When you see a bad apple, you don't want to bite into it anymore. Right. And um, because I was just talking to my mom, y'all, when I was in the tub, she's like, "I like talking about my ex boyfriend. I like him." I was like, "He's an emotional mess." <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, I can't. And so, you know, this business is kind of like courting and dating and all that stuff like that. And nice. but at the same token. Ex-boyfriends can make you money too. True. So that's how you know if you break it down like that. For me, all of, including my child's father, every man who has said he loves me is either a customer or a distributor on my team. Mm-hmm. Run that soch. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of how you have to treat it, whether you're talking to them or not. You may need that box and you may need to talk to them. So reach out to them every once in a while, Uh you know, feed into them, to their ego, to their, you know, to what they need every once in a while. You never know what's going on with them. And I have somebody like you on my team who's trying to go diamond and she's just like, I'm not getting it. I said, tone down your red and turn up a little yellow. Just try and for you, that's what I would say, because you're going into a season where these people are already planted. And if they are if, are feeling, if you feed them a few motivational things, they'll hold their hand. Just kind of invite mm-hmm. them, feed them a few motivational things, let them know what's going on, tag them on a video, you know, it may be exactly what they need. I have a girl who's on my team, who's a makeup artist, who was in the business. I signed, I called to sign her up um, during nine ninety nine. She signed up, did nothing. Has said she wants to do it, wants to do it, wants to do it every month. Okay. I had no idea that she was um, in the Millionaire's Academy somewhere once before when she was in. Because I never added her to that group. But she made a comment in that group, which means when she was in the business before, she was under somebody over there. <laughs> and so, but I had no idea. So point blank period, I've plugged her into the Young and Free. I, I tagged her on the call that we did last night. I just keep every month asking her, are you ready? Your baby's music. You know, right. are, are, are you ready? You super fly. Are you, you know, just let me know, girl. I'll come up, you know, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm going to send you one quick note every month. And that's it. Because the rest of the month, I'm getting my own coins, you know, and they're going to watch you just like I said before. And so you have to have a little bit of yellow, 10% turn it up because being all red turns people off and you're too hardcore and this business is somewhat emotional as well. You have to care about your, your team and their needs, um, emotional needs. If they're going through like the red I was telling you about on my team, I was telling her that one of her team members was going through a lot and she was posting it and, you know, having issues. And I thought it was, you know, a relationship. This She didn't even know it. She wasn't aware of it. So I'm like, you haven't reached out to her, you know, and said anything to her. And that's a problem because she's on your top line, you know? So 
we have to be mindful of those things. You may not want that ratchetity on your team, but they're on there. And unless they cancel their account, <laughs> they're going to take up a spot. So at least check in with them. Perfect. Yep, because that's what I just actually started doing this week, like reaching out to um, a few people that mm-hmm. were like on my top lines and things like that. Not really talking about it works. Like I haven't mentioned a business to anybody mm-hmm. um, at all. Like I just honestly been checking in with them, trying to figure out how it's been. Is you know how is it going? And mm-hmm. then a few of them have um, reached out. Now the few that have responded to reach out to me, like you know, eventually they'll mention it works before you mention it because they think that's what you're going to talk about. Exactly. But it's not. <laughs> I know. I know. Girl, I'm about to. I'm about to run my auto ship. No, you ain't. Right, I know. I know. It's so funny. <laughs> No, you and I'm like, I just want to know how your life been. Like I'm nothing really. Tomorrow. You right. <laughs> but that's some good advice. I'm gonna take that. <laughs> that's so funny you said that because I'll be like, that's not what I, I called to see about your granddaddy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I have one more question because I'm guessing y'all gonna be done. I was about to ask you, I said, where is the other question? <laughs> okay, so um well this is my question. So being that you do like so many things, and mm-hmm. I feel like, like I'm in this journey where like I've always been like a spiritual person and I think God has just already just give, given me that gift anyway. Uh-huh. So I feel like I use that gift to tie into my business like a lot, but now I'm mm-hmm. on this journey where I want to use it. Um I want to use it for something else. So you said there right. is no balance. Like there is no balance in this business. And I understand that. But with like your social medias, did you feel like you had to like, how do you feel like you separated the two or you didn't? Did you just put everything together? Like, do you talk about your nonprofit? Do you talk about like it works? Like do you talk about everything in this on the same platform. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that work? So I'm really just starting to do that. Um, and I feel like I'm just starting to do that because I have a marketing degree and because I'm so a, brand professional type person but Mm -hmm. everybody says that they can feel that that I exude that anyway so I've already Mm -hmm. been doing that and that's really what the word says that you should be doing anyway you Mm -hmm. know I just didn't know that I was doing it he said you you should be walking Christ-like so that people can feel that you are who you are and Mm -hmm. that you're a child of God without you even having to say anything Mm -hmm. and that's what I've been told people can read from my page and Mm -hmm. so that's something, you know, I would say, don't worry about creating bucket lists and buckets and so many different pages and so many different platforms. Mm-hmm. Create the platform of you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so the platform of Crystal is Crystal. I right. am Crystal. Mm-hmm. Period. You know, and you can't separate, you know, if you have a nonprofit, you can't separate that from your It Works business because for me, you all, it works is what pays for my nonprofit activities. Mm-hmm. I don't have to write and go after a lot of grants because I donate 5K per year minimum into my nonprofit from mm-hmm. my business, mm-hmm. you know? And I just talked about this in my community organization class. And she was asking, you know, well, how do you do it? And why do you do it? And all that stuff like that. And I was like, first off, it's an excellent write-off, you know? And, and second off, because... This is, this is my ministry. This is what God has placed on my heart, not someone else's. So why right. am I begging someone else to give me money for something that is a vision that I have? Right. You know, I'm the type of person that's going to make more money to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So, um, and Antoinette can attest to that, you know, her reading her story and her, you know, her just mm-hmm. watching her vision and what she wants for she and her family, you know, her husband and the kids, she's like, I'm not going to just be a wife and a mother, you know, I'm going to help be a helpmate and, you know, be a ride or die for real and make sure that my husband doesn't work himself into the ground and bring right. into his household, you know? <laughs> so you all weren't at the first diamond retreat, but I tell you, you have the bomb leader. When I watched this young girl break down, they so cute. First off, this little marriage thing they got. Going Aren't on. they adorable? But- <laughs> you see how I call it these little kids, these little marriage thing, because that's how all of us talk about them. Like these little kids think they so in love. So, <laughs> so but it's just, it, it's just awesome when you have a vision and you're focused and you are who you are. 
that's it. And in the world and the and technology and everything that we already have in place, you don't have to be somebody else. You're your right. own reality show. So yeah, don't, yeah okay. don't don't worry about creating a whole bunch of different like platforms and stuff like that. Right, because I was talking to like I was talking to a girlfriend of mine, but then I was just talking to Net the other day, and I was like, in the new year, I want to do rebranding, but I didn't want to switch up my page. It was more so like right. picture quality, like you know, give me exactly. the give me the camera, but I wanted to use the same platform because I feel like my followers, like like even when I make certain posts about it works, like I'm naturally a storyteller, but I notice okay. I get more like interaction and response when I'm being Crystal, the one who like lives for God and uses him, incorporates him in everything that I do. Versus mm-hmm. like a before and after or like a, a point. But they're looking at both. They're looking yeah. at both, you know. Yeah, so so. I think I'm going to keep them together. Thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. much. Yeah, I mean, but the picture quality is key. That's the only reason. I'm an Android lover, but I switched to iPhone because in the Diamond Group, everybody's talking about PicTap Go and all these apps. And I was like, ah. I am over this, <laughs> you yeah. know, I, you know, so I'm just super in love with my iPhone because of all the extras, you know, the business yep. that I can run from it. So yeah, the picture quality is bomb. Like that soup that I put it, put out this morning. I saw it. Y'all, that was, yeah, that looked like a professional photo. Right. Exactly. And it was just pick, tap, go. It was like, it was portrait. I took it with the, with the iPhone, with the portrait view mm. and then I pick, tap, go it. And then I posted it. And it was some tomato basil soup with some tilapia that I made the other day. You know, I just have some in the refrigerator. Uh-huh. And so I made tilapia fish tacos, y'all. And I had extra tilapia left ever over. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to throw this crushed up tilapia in my soup. It was so good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I do that too with leftovers. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. All right. I've got one more question, and then I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. So, <sighs> all right. So I have literally charted for diamond, what, three times, twice, three times. And every time, like the first time I was like, I wasn't super close, but I was close enough to where I could sort of taste it. And I was like, Oh, here that it goes. And then, <laughs> and then it just didn't happen. And like, yeah. I was with my boyfriend and I was like close to tears. I was like, I'm not going diamond. Like, and he was cheering me on. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I feel like a horrible person. And he was like, what? Like, just go next month. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well then help me. Like, right. but I kept, it's like every time it's like, I set a goal for diamond and then I go for it and it doesn't happen. So I've been trying to figure out like what the disconnect is. And I was talking to Antoinette and she was talking about rebranding kind of like Crystal mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know like, what tips would you give as far as rebranding? Like what exactly would you consider? Like what would you think that would entail when you're rebranding yourself? Okay. If that makes sense. So what are some of your characteristics and platform and everything already that you have on your page or about? Um, I'm fun. I think personally, uh, (laughs) I like food. I like going to the gym. I like hanging out with my friends. Mm -hmm. I like taking pictures. I like dogs and my boyfriend. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if that's okay. good, if that's a good description, but so that's it, pretty just much made, it. it just made me laugh and you seem like a fun person. And so part of that would be that. Now remember why I told you why I started, right? Because Alina mm-hmm. was having fun. And mm-hmm. there are a lot of people out there, you know, that are not going to join you because of the money. They're gonna join you because of the freedom and the fun. And so, Mm -hmm. and so those may be your runners, you know? So Mm -hmm. I would say, again, just the same thing with Crystal, make sure that you have crisp pictures that you learn how to tell your story well, but tell it like with sincerity, tell, tell you, you know, even though it's funny, Mm -hmm. oh, I like my boyfriend. That's cute. Like everybody, (laughs) you know, everybody, like, even for me, I'm 37 and I'm telling my son all the time, it's not my fault your mama fine. It's not like, you know, <laughs> so, you know, cause people, guys that roll up and they talking to me or he be looking like, I'm like, boy, I'm trying to tell you, your mama fine. You know, so I, stuff like that, you know, if I could, and my girlfriend say I need a reality show, but if I could be, if I could always, <laughs> you could see videos of me all the time, or if I could literally type what was going on, um, then it would be hilarious. So just do that, you know, and go live more, 
Um, but that will bring people to you, but also like plant the seeds and be out in the open more. I would say, mm -hmm. you know, take pictures of the basic things, you know, cause like when I was just, I just took a picture right before and I haven't posted it yet, but I was using till after the call. So I took this bath and I was able to relax and I was actually reading my word from my Spanish Bible. You know, so it keeps, hmm. me up on my, it keeps me up on my Spanish, but I'm listening to my gospel. I'm taking a bath. I'm relaxing with my It Works products. And I just decided to take a picture of it. And it prepared me for this call with you all. So that right there, that post alone is going to say that, you know, I have been sick. I've been under the covers. I've been down. I've been, you know, feeling in pain all day. But a lot of times when God has called you, you have to rise to the challenge and you got to just be there. And so Anthony asked me to do this like last week, the week before last, I wasn't going to say, oh, I'm sick. You know, that's, <laughs> another type, that's another type of business that we have. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so I would definitely say to start working towards and play up on your strengths and showing people what they are and then working hard strategically on those boxes. Like, I don't know how your chart is set up, but a lot of times Ooh, that's, no. <laughs> you know, that's, that's where, that's where it comes. People just not understanding and not knowing, like they'll get an order. Now we only have 24 hours to move stuff, you know, and they'll get an order and they won't know where it goes. One thing that I'm not sure if you, you all do with your, with your people, and this will be good to do, but get a chart out and know where the deficits are in all your boxes, especially going into the, the new year. And especially for people who don't know how to chart and don't know what they're doing, have them number the boxes. So that means that, for example, if you have a diamond chart or if you have an emerald, your emerald on your diamond chart, right? They're like, okay, well, when the next order comes in, where do I put it? That's what you need to go through that entire chart with them and say, you need to put order one, two, three, four here. Go to mm -hmm. the next box, put it here. So that when the order comes in, they're not wondering where to place the box, where to place the order. They have their, to tell them to laminate that mamma jamma and keep it with them all month long. You know, put it in a, in a protective sleeve. And so that when the order comes in within 24 hours or go right to that person's website. You know what I'm saying? Go right to that person's website, put that order in underneath that person. So you're not questioning. Your time is not lapsing. You're not messing and worrying about the boxes. That's really what's going to help you with boom season to stay strategic too. You know, if you have workers and people that are in this with you, if you can have them number those boxes, they can stay on track because that has really helped my people. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll be taking that. <laughs> All right. Anyone have any um, more questions? Hmm? Oh, I thought somebody else said something. Um, does anybody have any more questions? I know we get into the 10 o'clock. What's next? All right. Well, this was great. This was perfect. This was awesome. Good. Yeah, definitely. I'm so happy that you still was able to come on tonight, even though you wasn't feeling good. So I definitely pray that God heals your body. Thank you. Oh my goodness. And um, so yeah, oh we God, are here. Take, take some, take some more medicine real quick before my call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. See, you still got your call. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just wanted to pick your brain. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just um, what, are you going to conference? Girl, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll see you there for sure. Okay. Where are you all staying? Um, I'm staying in an Airbnb. Okay. Yeah. Still debating on baby coming, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. So we'll see you um in Tampa and we're rooting for you to go triple presidential ambassador as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, we are all going. We are all promoting. Yes. No ands, ifs, or buts. Yeah. Wait, oh, I'm sorry. I just realized I met you. I I did meet you. I, <laughs> I was like, wait, no, like, oh, wait. Did you go to the Did you go to the boot camp in Grand Rapids? Yeah. Yes, I did meet you then. <laughs> I, did. I, was like, 
I kept looking. I was like, no, I think I really, I think I didn't meet her. I think I hugged you and you ain't know who I was. And I was like, probably oh, where, where you live. I live, I live in Virginia now, but I'm from, we're okay. from, like a lot of the team on here is from Ben Harbor, Michigan. So I went oh, home. Okay. I went home to Grand Rapids well, took, and then went to the conference. Well, boot camp. Right. I remember. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's a small world, yeah, because we do have a lot of Michigan, but you're in Chicago, right? Yeah, but I have, I have a lot of Michigan, a lot of Alabama, a lot of people all over. So, do you have um do you have somebody in Detroit that can that needs an accountability partner? Um, yes, definitely needs an accountability. Why wow, you have somebody in Detroit, Chrissy? There you go. Look. Ah. <laughs> yes, where they where are they? <laughs> <laughs> I show. It's just. We gonna figure this out because we definitely yes y'all need to work together and i'm always i didn't know you were in detroit because yeah always, i just came back here actually in um september so okay, we're we gonna work on that with chrissy and crystal because i'm like literally last weekend i was going there to do a party like i'm always in detroit i was born in detroit see okay. i'm always there yeah see, chrissy yes this is awesome great. And you need to mark your calendar and come here for January 20th. It's only it's in, And I can come to Illinois because I have a distributor in Illinois, too, with yeah. me. And yeah. she, um, she, she's pretty new, and she's always look, look, trying to have a – like, she's looking for people to just be around about the business because I don't have anybody there. Yeah, y'all definitely need to plug in. It's um, right there, the 20th, University of Chicago. So as soon as I get the flyer, yeah, I'll, share, I'll share it with you. It's gonna be okay, perfect, because I should look into coming to that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Look, we just connecting to everything. Look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a great night. I will see the team next Wednesday. I'll probably see you, what, Monday or so with Lena. Since you and Lena tonight. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Share, look, right. share this. Since you recorded it, share it with me so I can let the I team I sure will. Me. Okay. All right, honey. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.